More trouble for Attorney General Eric Holder. Congress wants him back in the hot seat. Now, the request came from the House Oversight Committee, and it comes as the embattled Attorney General fires back at critics, sparking a whole new controversy. In an interview published yesterday, Attorney General Holder talked about his critics. Mr. Holder said he believed that a few, the more extreme segment, were motivated by animus against Mr. Obama and that he served as a stand-in for him. This is a way to get at the president because of the way I can be identified with him, he said, both due to the nature of our relationship and, you know, the fact that we're both African American. Well, now Attorney General Holder is being accused of playing the race card. And tonight, the Justice Department gave us this statement. That's a complete distortion of the Attorney General's comment. His comments, both in the article and elsewhere, have made clear that he believes much of the criticisms launched against him are unfortunately the typical Washington gotcha games. A simple reading of this comment shows that he was referring to how he is identified with the president given their close relationship and all they share in common, including their ideology. The position of attorney general has historically been a target for partisan attacks, and given the critical work that this attorney general is doing at the Department of Justice, it's no surprise that some are engaging in such tactics. His critics rightly view the Attorney General as a progressive force, and given our current political environment, there will be those who use any opportunity to score political points. Congressman Trey Gowdy recently questioned the Attorney General about Operation Fast and Furious, and he has called for his resignation. Congressman Gowdy joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? Very well. So, uh, well, let's get right to the what's uh, got people uh, up in arms a little bit tonight is that uh, is he playing the race card in answer to your call for his resignation and the question of him testify before these hearings and he's getting a little, he's getting grilled pretty heavily well his first comments were very different from the press release that they re uh, just released he didn't talk about his ideology in his first comments he talked about race and it, it, Fast and Furious has nothing to do with race the questions that we have asked about who knew what when at DOJ and how this ill-conceived boxed investigation ever got off the ground are as race neutral as anything you will find in this culture. So I am bitterly disappointed. I hope he will walk back those comments and take them back because uh, to, to criticize your critics and um, accuse them of racism when you have legitimate questions about the top law enforcement official in this country uh, does not serve him very well. Well, I, I, I have told you before that I've known him for years, and what is sort of deeply disturbing to me is that it seems like there's some pretty easy answers. Like, um, who knew about Fast and Furious? Who authorized it? And who was the highest ranking person? And it's like those questions still haven't been answered. And do you have an explanation as to why those, I mean, those have not been answered? Has he has said to you, like, why he won't tell you or why he won't get that information? No, he keeps talking about the inspector general uh, and the fact that the IG is investigating. Well, the IG has been investigating since February. And the point I made to him, Greta, was when a federal judge asks you about a Giglio or Brady issue, you don't hide behind an IG report. When a committee of Congress asks you who knew what, when, and Fast and Furious, who approved it, what role did Lanny Brewer play, you can't hide behind an IG report uh, or an IG investigation. Uh, we're a branch of government, whether he likes it or not, that is co-terminus and co-equal with the, with the executive branch. And we're going to continue to ask the questions. Now, he can answer them as slowly as he wants to, but we've already scheduled a, a, another appearance for him in January, uh, January 24th. And th it's not going away. It's not political. It's not partisan. It's not Washington gotcha. You have a dead Border Patrol agent. You have dead Mexican citizens. These are legitimate questions. If we didn't ask him these questions, we should be run out of town. What? I, I'm not sure that he understands that, you know, whoever authorized this, you know, he himself has said Fast and Furious was a terrible idea. The president said it's a terrible idea. Everyone said it's a terrible idea. The one thing is that no one's identified who authorized it, and that person who has such poor judgment could still be an active decision maker in the Justice Department to make another really bad decision. And, and that's why I can't understand is like why he doesn't want to quickly identify those people so that we don't have other really bad decisions in the future. And that's, and, and I don't understand why it's taken since February. Well, some of the names that, that he would have to call are very close to him. His chief of staff knew about Fast and Furious early in 2010. Greta, his chief of staff looked at a map where guns were being recovered in Mexico. How did the guns get there? That's a simple question any prosecutor would ask. How did these guns from Arizona get to Mexico? His chief of staff is one name he'd have to call. Lanny Brewer, uh, the head of the criminal division, is another name he would have to call. Lanny Brewer knew the gun walking went, uh, took place in 2010. So 
uh, either some misguided sense of loyalty that he has to his chief of staff or Lanny Brewer, or, uh, and I'm beginning to think it may even be more than that. Maybe he's protecting someone even higher than the uh, the criminal chief and his chief of staff. Do you have who appointed the uh, the inspector general to this? Who who authorized he, it? He did. Um, and so he after, benefits from the delay that. The he did it after Senator Grassley wrote the letter. After he sent a demonstrably false response in February, which they then withdrew, and then he appointed a, a, an inspector general, and that was in late February. And here we are, almost well, well, in 2012. You, can you call the inspector general? Do you have any authority to call the inspector general and say, "Where are you on your report? What's taking you?" Long and can you answer this particular question? Who authorized this? That was a great question that you asked me the last time I was with you. In fact, it was such a good question, I shared it with Chairman Issa, and um, ultimately that'll be the chairman's decision. You don't want to create the appearance of interfering with what's supposed to be an independent investigation, um, but uh, uh, the world could come to an end before this IG can, finishes can you, her can report. Can you send a written interrogatory over there with the question where the answer under oath, we just say, who authorized, who's the highest person who authorized it? Can you send that? Uh, you probably can. I think what um, what might be even better than that is to ask when can you give us an idea of when you're going to be completed. Is, is he actually working? I mean, like, I mean, what does it take to walk through the halls of justice and say, okay, did you know about it? Did you know about it? Did you know about it? I mean, to find out. I mean, like, why is the Inspector General taking since last February? Oh, I guess because this year's an election year coming up. I mean, I hate I to mean, be cynical about it, but I, mean, but I don't have any can, other can explanation. You, can you get an explanation from it which would would not in any way uh, harm the investigation or, or in any way jeopardize? Could you get an explanation? From the, from the inspector general, what is taking you so long? What are you doing? How many people are you talking to? How many documents have you gone through? Are you working on this nine to five? What other projects do you have? I mean, can you at least find out from him that? We could, if you will defend us when we're <laughs> accused of, and, and I mean, as, as a former criminal defense attorney, if you'll defend me for the allegation that we are impeding or interfering with an independent investigation, because you just, know that's going to come. Okay, well, just ask for a time clock. I mean, can, I mean just ask, ask, him, ask him for a timeline. That's not going to. That's not going to get into the investigation. That will not Just get find me in out. Trouble. Like, when are we going to? When are we going to find out? And what's taking so long? That is a fair question. And what's it's taking a so long? Question. And that doesn't even go into the substance. That's a fair question. And uh, next time I see you, I'll have you an answer. Good. Well, we might have you back soon. Then, real soon. Anyway, Congressman, thank you, sir. Thank you.